Well, to discuss this, we're joined in Pristina by Libun Aliu. He's a Kosovo MP representing the Vetevendosje party. And finally, from Belgrade is Darko Trifunovic, a research fellow and lecturer at the Faculty of Security Studies at Belgrade University. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Libun, let me begin with you. Why do you need an army? Each sovereign state should have uh, the right for self-collective defense and therefore uh, we need an army. It is a, a constitutive element of a sovereign state, sovereign and independent state. That's why right. it's elementary. And not every country has had the history that Kosovo has had, especially since it's not too long ago. So with that in context and that in mind, do you accept why this might not be the best time to decide to push for an army? Well, army? well uh, uh, in the past, in the past, there have been examples of limitations uh, on some states that have, let us say, have been aggressors. But Kosovo has never attacked any other state. And on the contrary, we have been colonized by Serbia for about 100 years. And mm -hmm. there is very difficult to find any argument uh, that can support the idea of preventing Kosovo from having its own standing army for collective self-defense. Darko Trifunovic. The KSF already is an army in all but name, so why not formalize it into something that is called an army? First of all, you can see our colleague from Pristina. He's standing and sitting behind Albanian, not the Kosovo flag. So he is very contradictor. And if we are creating another Albanian state in Europe, we are very wrong. First of all, uh, Albanians in Kosovo they cannot have army illegally. If they want to have army, of course, okay. But according to their constitution, army is not the mention. So okay. But it's up to them some... whether they want to change the constitution or pass it through parliament without changing the constitution. It's their business, isn't it? No, no, they are not alone. I'm sorry to say it's not up to them. They are not living alone in Kosovo. There is Roma people, there is a Serbia people, and Kosovo is not the sovereign state because sovereign state is a member of the United Nations. So once when Kosovo becomes sovereign state and member of the uh, United Nations, then we can talk further. Right. But in this, this moment, we need to talk about peace. But forever... Okay. Talk... Uh, uh, allow me for a second, Darko. For the foreseeable future, a country like Russia would, would never allow them to become a fully-fledged state according to the United Nations in that respect. So what, are they going to be in limbo forever? Russia, if there is a country like China, and also I think Turkey, if Turkey, uh, Turkey need to think and reconsider decision to recognize Kosovo, because I understand that Turkish recognition of Kosovo, it's a brave step forward in order to, to uh, tomorrow Turkey will recognize Kurdish state on its own territory. Okay, that was quite a leap. That was an interesting one. I mean, I know you were thinking about that for a long time before you came onto the program. So, okay, credit to you. It's quite a leap, but I want to stick to the topic here. Libun Aliu, we look at the fears of the Serb minority, and, and Darko mentioned something that is quite tangible and quite real. There's a heavy history, and I remember going to North Mitrovica especially. A lot of the ethnic Serbs there felt that at any given point, the ethnic Albanian majority wants to wipe them out. Whether that's real or perceived, wouldn't an army just make those things worse and heighten those fears of the Serb minority in Kosovo? Well, uh, uh, if we would look at history recently in 2010, and in actually in 2000, uh, from the northern part of Kosovo, there has been expelled about 10,000 Albanian citizens. Uh, while the Kosovo army would be the, the norm that will, that will bring peace and uh, it will be to provide security for all citizens of Kosovo. And uh, uh, we believe we believe that uh, that Kosovo's path toward full liberal Atlantic integration will, where NATO can play the security role. And in this aspect, uh, uh, the army of Kosovo will be a defensive defensive mm -hmm. army. That can just bring bring peace to the to the to the region, and also to the to bring the peace to bring peace and security also for the for the uh, Serbian citizens in the northern part of Kosovo, or in the same way as in the southern part. Okay, so Dako, you have an opposition politician here 
saying that they have no interest in attacking the Serbian minority in Kosovo. Why don't you believe him? Look, it's not what I believe or not. I am in favor that we shall sit, talk, negotiate. Uh, now it's time for peace, not for any kind of aggressive statements, not of uh, kind of anything aggressively. But we can see whenever you have internal problem in Pristina, uh, Pristina's authorities are uh, all the time by default, they go violent. So we need to calm down and see what we can to do uh, on the benefit of all people residing in the Balkan, not only in Kosovo, Serbia and elsewhere, Definitely, a number of countries that they are withdrawing their recognition of Kosovo is growing. And Kosovo, if, is, if this continue like this, the basic problem, which bothers me a lot, that young people from Kosovo, they're going to leave. They're not going to wait any kind of decision tomorrow. They want decision now. And that's exactly what Kosovo uh, politicians, current Kosovo politicians, that most of them, they're supposed to finish as war criminals. They are not credible to uh, so we need a new generation of Kosovo, as well, maybe in Serbian politicians. I don't want to say okay. nothing uh, against Kosovo that I, I don't right. say something against Serbian. So we need maybe a new generation, a new, new approach. We need a new, uh, let's say, energy in the region without this guy that he's now getting okay. Šešek, he's radicals from Serbian. Serbia. We don't need that. Okay, although... We don't need Although a lot of young people support having their own sovereign independent army. I just want you to have a little listen, Dako, to General Zaimer Halimi. He's called a general in the KSF. I spoke to him a year ago when we did Crossing the Line in Kosovo. Have a little listen to what he told me. Our final goal is to transform the Kosovo security force into an army. That's when I think our mission will be accomplished. You know, Dako, when I spoke with him, when I spoke with General Halimi, and we did a tour of the, the KSF uh, base. Ultimately, they saw it as an inevitability. They trained with the help of NATO and Western forces. And eventually, Western and NATO forces must leave and they can take over their own security. As a Serb, isn't it better to have Kosovo Albanians, Kosovo Albanians with their own army rather than NATO at your doorstep? If they don't respect their own constitution and there is no word if they don't respect their own rules. So how, who will believe them? And if they want army, they have Albanian army. As I said, see our colleagues from Pristina, he's sitting nearby Albanian flag, not the Kosovo flag. I only see you a red see background. Now. I don't see a flag. I only see a red background. I don't see a flag. Just, you can see near, near him, it's Albanian, not the Kosovo flag. Just let him to move a little bit and you will see. <laughs> Now okay. there is no. Okay. Now there okay. is no. But it was Albanian flag, okay. not the Kosovo. Okay. No. So. Who can believe? Okay. Who okay. Can okay. Hold on. So there's a bunch of things to unpack here, right? Flag. All over, all over Kosovo, Albanian undoubtedly. Flag. Okay. Certainly, all over Kosovo, undoubtedly, there's a Kosovo flag and there's an Albanian flag, which is <laughs> attached to an ethnic identity, which is also a flag of another country. That's another whole thing to deal with here. But let me ask Liburn to address the issue of if you guys can't respect your own constitution, why should Darko respect and believe you? It's in your constitution not to have your own army. Why are you pushing for this right now then? Kosovo, Kosovo policy is getting advanced. It is the same, remaining in the same uh, structure as it was. It's just, just getting advanced in, in, uh, in uh, let us say, more, more aspects and concerning the sovereignty, concerning the sovereignty. And also I, what I would like to mention is that, uh, yes, about the dialogue, we have been having a dialogue and we are still, I think, in a way to continue the dialogue with Serbia. That is the main thing in relation between Kosovo and Serbia. Since 2011, we are having a dialogue and we had about 33 agreements that has been made and none of them has been fully respected by Serbia and most of them are not being respected at all. And uh, let's just mention about uh, that recently, this year, this year has started with the assassination of Oliver Ivanovich. Yes. So the entire, uh, uh, let us say, attempt for worsening relations is, uh, is coming from, from Serbia. Uh, no one from Albania has been uh, accused about this assassination. There Serbia, are about four but, Serbs but, that have okay. But Liber, the, the ethnic Serbs of North Mitrovica saw the assassination of Oliver Ivanovic yeah. as 
a possible sign of them being wiped out, not the other way around, right? I spoke to them. That's well, the thing. Both well, sides well, are well, saying this is a sign well, of the other well, side going well, extreme. Let, let us remember that Oliver Ivanovich was opponent, opponent right. to, to Vucic and to the government in, in, uh, in Serbia. And uh, there is also an attempt for a, for a journalist who came to find out what happened. Mm -hmm. But has, he has been also attacked and, uh, and uh, ended up in, in hospital. But what I should mention also that this year there has been a visit from Vucic in, the, in Kosovo. And uh, what he declared that was uh, very interesting, he praised, he praised Milosevic and he called him as a great leader who make few mistakes. Mm. And uh, these kinds of declarations are, that are giving a very, very bad signal right. toward the uh, Okay, so let me Kosovo. ask Darko. Darko, isn't it more of a provocation when Vucic, Vucic says things like, Milosevic was a great leader who just made some mistakes. Isn't that more of a provocation than Kosovo deciding to formalize an army? Um, I agree uh, with our Albanian colleague. We don't need any provocation. But just comparison, president of Albania, he visits Serbia and nobody... We lost you for a second there, Darko. We're going to come back to Darko in a second. We're going we're gonna to try and stabilize that. Let me ask, let me ask Liban something else here. Let me bring in... NATO, yes. right? So we lost, we lost Darko for a second. We'll bring him back in a second. Liban, let me bring in NATO here, yes. right? So NATO is your ally. Forget the Russians, forget the Serbs. Jens Stoltenberg, NATO's Secretary General, describing the idea of creating the Kosovo army, saying such a move goes against the advice of many NATO allies and may have serious repercussions for Kosovo's future Euro-Atlantic integration. This is NATO. These are not your enemies. They're saying it's a bad time. Yes, yes, but also there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, declaration from states that uh, from different states that uh, support in a way that said that Kosovo has the right has the right to have its own army, and uh, therefore therefore uh, let us think if uh, let us do an analyze uh, to analyze a bit our neighbors, our neighbors and their declarations around they all have armies they have the right to have armies. Why shouldn't Kosovo has a right to have an army? And uh, although that would be a defensive army, that will be a, an army that will have just a collective, just a collective self-defense mm -hmm. meaning on the on the bottom of on the right. bottom of it. Okay. So in this, in this aspect, in this aspect, there is no threat to any kind of, uh, uh, let us say, peace. And. Understood. Uh, and the security in the, in, the, in the Balkans. Darko, we have you back. Darko Trifunovic, come in. Yes, I'm with you. So um, what I want to say, uh, president of Albania, he visited Serbia with no problem. So whatever he said, he was full of provocation. He wanted to create, uh, of course, bigger Albania, and nobody in Serbia uh, did not even mention that. So Vucic was in Kosovo. He was uh, stopped by war criminals, by Lashtaku, Getty, Ladrovci, and, and others. And we know all these guys, sooner or later, they're going to finish, uh, they're going to face the justice. So uh, talking about the army again, you know, the Kosovo have already defense, defense forces. This is the army. So uh, why now they are rushing? What is the reason for rush? I don't see the rush. Uh, and uh, let's calm down. Let's see how we can work together. Let's wait some new generation of the people after a, a, a tribunal for uh, uh, KLA uh, fu uh, become fully operational. And also, you can see our friend in Kosovo, he's always constantly mentioning Kosovo. Now you call him from Turkey, go to Ottoman Museum, and you will see Kosovo, not Kosovo. Okay, okay well, hold on. Hold, hold on. hold on, hold on, Darko. Okay, so, ethnic Serbs, you call it Kosovo, they call it Kosovo. End of story. It's a Turkish different discussion. Are you Turkish? It's, I'm, not Turkish. Turkish I'm not Turkish. I'm not Turkish, and we're doing a program to the rest of the world here. Libun, to address the point of calm down, doesn't the man make a point? He's saying, take it easy. Why now? Why rush? And again, it goes back to what NATO's saying. Okay, we agree with you, but why do it right now? Well, why <laughs> not now? Well, it is, it's going to remain the same thing. It's just, just as I mentioned, it is just uh, an advancing concerning concerning the sovereignty of, of Kosovo. And, and what is what does that mean? Why is that a problem? Uh, so, according to constitution, this is still going to be the same forces. They are just going to be advanced in a number 
from 2,500 to 5,000 within 10 years. So each year there are going to be 250 uh, soldiers more and uh, members more. And uh, in the by the end, by the end of after 10 years, there are going to be about 5,000 mm -hmm. troops. And on the other aspects, everything is remaining the same except the aspect of sovereignty. And uh, what does that make a problem? That is one. And the second thing, uh, when Vucic was in Kosovo, he was prizing Milosevic. We know Milosevic, who, who he was. Mm -hmm. And we have been facing him. We have been facing the entire the army of Yugoslavia and Serbia since 2012 that have, have never had any changes from time to time. And uh, we shouldn't ever uh, forget what happened here during the Milosevic period. And when the existing president of Serbia is coming to Kosovo and prizing him and say, saying even that he has made just few little, few mistakes, that is a great. But, that is a great problem. He's a, a very clear signal from the Serbian side to work to work Kosovo. Okay, things not fully resolved. Still a lot of tension. It's going to be interesting to see what happens well, on Friday. I remember. I remember the yes. the uh, prime minister of uh, Albania in Belgrade. He has been uh, just saying that Koso Serbia should recognize Kosovo. He asked. From Serbia right. to recognize Kosovo. Okay, so that you don't the, equate the two. Said the provocation that okay. there's Libun Aliu and Darko Trifunovic. I thank you for joining us on the Newsmakers. It was important to get the two of you together. Thanks again.